Good morning, Saints. Uh, first of all, we apologize for the la uh, late start. Let's uh, get started with the word of prayer. The, the Bible says, in the beginning, God. And so I do encourage you, whatever you do, in the beginning, God. Those four words should be words that you should minister or uh, you should live with, stay with, walk around with. In the beginning, God. In whatever you do, in the beginning, God. Amen? So let's pray. Father, in the matchless name of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, O oh God. We worship you. We bless you. You are Lord. You are the King of kings. The I am that I am. Thank you, O oh God, Father, my Lord, for bringing us into your presence. We thank you, O oh God, Father, for the rains, O oh God, Father, my Lord. O oh God, Father, it goes to water the plants. It goes to, to, to provide much needed Freshness in the world. We thank you, oh God. It goes to speak to how creative a God you are. My Lord, oh Father, we ask in the name of your Son, oh God, for the forgiveness of sins. If there are sins we've committed throughout the week, oh God, Father, forgive us. And that as we come into your presence, oh God, Father, my Lord, we ask in the name of your Son, may we not live the same, oh God. We pray, Holy Spirit, grant us the spirit of favor. Grant us the spirit of wisdom. Grant us the spirit, spirit of healing. So, God, Father, my Lord, we surrender all that we do today. We pray, oh God, Father, that as we start this new ser uh, series on open doors, or just doors, Lord, Father, I pray, oh God, Father, that you will open doors for someone in here. You will open doors for us, oh God, Father, my Lord. I pray, oh Lord, Father, that you will have absolute control over all that we do in this place today. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, O oh God, Father, we pray. Amen. Let me, uh, I think I should quickly read some Bible verses. I know we're kind of late, uh, but just to say something. We're in the month of July. Um, let me read uh, Genesis, Genesis 13. All right, Genesis 13, verses 14 through 17. Genesis 13, 14 through 17. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward, for all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. And I would make your descendants as the dust of the earth so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Amen? First, notice, he said, when Lot separated from Abraham, or for Abraham at the time he was called, there are certain things that need to leave you. There are certain things that you need to walk away from if you really want to hear from God. It could be sin. It could be whatever things out there, whatever your lust desires, what worldly things. Certain things have to lift you for the Lord to have an encounter, for you to have an encounter with the Lord, for the Lord to speak to you. So Lot left, God appeared. And when he appeared, he said, arise and look. However your eyes take you, wherever your eyes take you, I've given that to you. Why is that important? It's important, I've said that before, that before anything manifests,
Whereas God says, however you are, you are, you are in my imagination, if you can just imagine for yourself that I was totally up to a PhD, that is what you're going to get. I'm giving you that. I want you, to, I want you to think. He's made it so open. So that so much I say this, if you are not experiencing certain benefits, certain things in your life, could it be what you are saying? Could it be that you're limiting yourself with your thoughts, with your plans, with, your, with, what, that, with that that you're saying? And then at some point he tells, he tells Abraham to arise and walk around. Walk around the place. This is all I've given you, the length, the length that you go. He's giving us it to us. He wants us to act. There's no more blanket check. There's no more manners from above. He gives. We have a role to play. This is the seventh month. We talked, I, I'm so big on goals. I've said, yeah, the, if you really want to see a difference in your life, you have to have goals. The world does it. I wonder why we, the church, don't do it. The world does it. People set goals. When you see all these successful people, they've had goals. So as we enter the seventh month, my question is, how are you going about those goals? Action on your part. You are today, you will hear me say this a lot. You are today a product of what you did yesterday or said yesterday. Tomorrow, you'll be a product of what you do today. If you want to harvest corn tomorrow, you plant that corn today. No manners from above. Amen? And um, as a result of that, that's why today we're doing a new topic. And this topic, I titled it, we can uh, it's doors, but it can be titled Open Doors. And I asked media team, can you put up uh, Revelation 3, verses 7 through 8 on the screen, please? Revelation 3, verses 7 through 8. That is what we'll be dealing with for the sake of time. Uh, Brahara, is anybody keeping track of the time that we have to be half here? Because, I mean, given the fact that we just laced out. And if I have some extra copies of notes here just in case somebody needs them. Revelation 3. No, no. I need to give you. I need to, you always remind me. Thanks. Revelation 3, verses 7 through 8. Let me read for the sake of time. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write. This is not God talking to John. And this is John, uh, John writing in the book of Revelation. He said, write this. These things says he who is holy. This is who is holy. God is holy, right? It's God saying this. This thing says he who is holy. He who is true. He who has the key of David. He who opens and no one shuts. And shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. For you've you, you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Amen? The second verse that I want us to read will be 1 Thessalonians verse 2.18. 1 Thessalonians 2.18, it says, Therefore, this is Paul writing, Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. Paul wanted to go to the church in to, 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 to Thessalonica, but yet Satan hindered him and the rest of the team. Open doors. That's the topic we need to discuss today about open doors. God says to the church in Philadelphia, says this, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. Why? Has he up, said an open door for you? Have you have a little strength? Have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Three things that the church did. So for you to have an open door, for God to set an open door, there has to be a relationship with God. What is a door? What is a door? Can you just? Can anybody, what is the door? By the way, just, let's, yeah, first of all, let's, for the sake of time, before we got into this building, we had to, we had to go through the door, correct? Now, how did you get through that door? Who, how did the door open itself? What are the ways of opening that door? It's a key, yes, good. And, 
you can open the door yourself through. Uh, you, you can push it in. Good answers. Nothing wrong with that. You can push the doors. Very true. If it's open, you can push it. Yeah. Word of God. Power and authority. That's, that's the key. Any other comment? Now, before we got here this morning, before we got here, was that door open? Or was it locked? It was locked. Okay, good. Point I'm saying, that what I'm getting to is, and all of your answers are right. I'm not, please, don't get me wrong. They're, they're the right answers. The point I'm getting to here is that by default, all doors are locked. By default. And door here, when we talk about door, when the Bible talks about door, the Bible is talking about access. It can access to an opportunity. Access is it's an opportunity. It's an open door. Access is something. You're standing here in darkness. You need to cross over to light. You have to go through certain things. And by default, whatever that thing is, it's locked. So I want us this morning to spend a few minutes, the time that God has provided us with, and if we can complete this topic, fine. If not, we complete it when God provides that time to talk about this door, this, that door. Because I sincerely believe that someone is seated here today that God has spoken certain things to and you've been trying. Like Paul said, we wanted to come to you, but Satan blocked us. There is someone here today, I believe sincerely, and that's why I think God gave us this topic to talk about, that there have been some doors that have been closed, that have been shut. Remember he said, I will open doors that no one else can shut. And doors that I will close, no one can open. A door is a symbol of an opportunity. A door can also, from the negative perspective, signify imprisonment. See, when Paul was here and wanted to go to Thessalonica, he was prevented from going. You could sit here in darkness, you want to go into light, the doors will keep you away from that. Doors also, biblically, can be a sign of preservation. Remember, in during the days of Noah's act, what did God say? God asked Noah to, when Noah finished building the, 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 the ark, right? And had everything walk in, get into the, uh, in, in, into the ark. And God himself shut the doors to preserve all that was in there. So door in the Bible is, is a symbol. It, it's a symbol of negative and positive. But our greatest focus, uh, can somebody read verses, J John 10, 7, please. John 10, 7. It could be circumstance, it could be people, it could be a spirit, right? Anything that is, again, I said it's access to an opportunity. Access is, is access to something else. So anything that prevents you, be it a person, be it a circumstance, be it a spirit, is a door. John 10, 7. The book of John 10, 7, please. John 10, 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Amen. So for us Christians, for us believers, he says, Jesus says, I am the door. Access from darkness, access from a sinful world into getting a relationship with God. He is a door. Until then, we had no access. Until then, we couldn't cross over. To that point, until the coming of Christ, we are in darkness. We are in prison. We are living in death. But when he came, he provided an access. But this morning, most of all that we we'll discuss today is more so focusing on closed doors. Not so much about those open doors. We know Christ has opened the doors for us, but those closed doors, I don't know what is it that you want to get to accomplish, what your ambitions are, what your desires are. If there's anything preventing that, we find, want to find ways how to open that door. Amen? I stated here from the beginning, said by default, all doors are closed. By default, all doors are closed. Um, the distance be 
doing you. And all that you desire is a door. The distance between you and that you desire is your do a door. The distance between poverty and wealth, sickness and good health, lack and plenty is a door. Can somebody read Luke 11, 7, please? And while he's looking at it, somebody to look up Matthew 25, 8 to 10. Luke 11, 7. Luke chapter 11, verse 7. I, and he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. The door is what? Shut. I said by default, all doors are shut. You remember the story where Jesus told a parable that this guy came knocking on the door for the friend to give him food, that he needs food. And the guy kept saying that my doors are locked. But somewhere along the road, because this guy kept knocking, at some point he decided to open the door. But what was between him, the hungry person, and the food he needed was that, that door, that closed door. What is between you and all that you desire, that better life you desire, is a closed door. Matthew 25, 8 to 10, please. Matthew 25, 8 to 10. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And the door was what? Shut. These are ten virgins. Remember the story of the ten virgins? They went, five of them had enough oil, five did not. When they asked, can you borrow some oil? said, no. If we give less, we find ourselves in, 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 in lack. Why don't you go and buy? They went and bought. As they went, the bride showed up. And they all went in. By the time they came back, the doors were locked. Who locked the door? The bride was in there, right? What do you think the bride? I, I get confused. That word bride and bridegroom was in there. He locked the door. And they kept knocking, but the doors are locked. So I said, by default, your access to that prosperity, to that good health, to whatever you desire, those good things you desire, there's a locked door. Why are doors locked? Number one, they're locked to manage or restrict access. We lock doors to restrict access. This building, when we came here this morning, that doors were locked. These doors were not left open. The reason, the purpose they did that was to restrict access to the building. Why were those doors locked? That door was locked to increase the value of this building. If this building was left unattended, it would diminish the worth. So there's some positiveness in something being locked. Just because doors are shut does not make it negative all the time. There's some positiveness that comes with it. God preserves you in his kingdom. He preserved those children, and Noah and his family and all those things. It was a positive thing. He preserved all of them. Locked, he shut the doors. It's to protect and preserve. Again, again the Bible verses, I, I just want, because I see that they've just uh, changed the time there. We need to speed up with the time so, uh, and, and as such. I charge you to read those verses that I have uh, listed up, uh, listed there. And then the fourth reason why doors are locked is to deliberately hinder your progress. We have prison doors. When Paul and Silas were locked up, when Peter was locked up, see, they had nothing to do with the world outside. They could not get outside. If you are locked here, if uh, those that are confined, 
they restricted. So there are certain doors that are locked with the sole intent to delay your progress. Now for the rest of this study that we do, our goal is to find out, to address that fourth part, those doors that have, lo have been locked to negatively impact us, those doors that have been locked to those doors that have been locked to prevent us from progressing, right? And so as I said, when you come to a door, the door is locked. When the door is locked, you know, what do you do when you come to a door? There are two things you need to do to any given door you come to. Uh, Pastor Aro, can you just ask uh, Pastor Peter how much time I have, please? Because they've made that change. So that I know who is taking over, please. When you come to any open, uh, any shut door, I said doors by default are shut, right? Now, when you come to any shut door, what do you do? There are two things you should be doing. Number one, discernment. Why is that door shut? Remember, we discussed in there are the four reasons why doors are shut. There's a positive aspect of it, and there's a negative aspect. The, the positive aspect is to preserve, to protect, to increase the value, right? And the negative access uh, part of it is, is to hinder your progress. So when you come to a door, believers, Christians, do not just automatically jump into say, I shut this door, I do this. No, first of all, ask yourself, get the spirit of discernment. How many, why is this door shut? Right? So that's the very first thing, discernment. And once you discern and you understand the reason why that door is shut, if it is shut negatively, then guess what? You have to move on to do the necessary thing to unlock that door. Uh, Pastor, are you saying five minutes? Yes. Okay. When you come to a door, the first thing you discern, why is that door locked? Is it negative? Is it positive? For positive reasons or negative reasons? When you find out the reason as to why that door is locked, then you can now take the necessary action. If it is to unlock that door, then you go for it. Amen? We will end here. Next time, by the grace of God, we will continue from there. Again, not every door that is shut against you is a bad door. But by default, almost all doors, all doors are shut. And the distance between you and all that you desire is a short door. Amen? Father, we thank you, O God, Father, for this time in your presence. We thank you, O Lord, for introducing this topic, doors, or open doors. I pray, O God, Father, that as we go through this series, let somebody's doors be open, doors that have been otherwise shut. And for those doors that need not to be uh, stay open, may you shut them, O God. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen.